Hey, what's up you guys? This is John Hang, and in today's video I'm going to be going over how to install a new outlet in a wall. So currently I have this outlet right here. I want to add an additional one right here. So if you guys are new to the channel, I'm currently renovating my bedroom and along this entire wall I plan to cabinet it out. So this leftmost cabinet is going to be storing my tall items like my cordless vacuum. And right now I have this outlet right here, but to charge my cordless vacuum using that uh, existing outlet, I would have to keep the door constantly open and that's not going to be a good look. So the idea is to add an outlet right here inside of that cabinet and I'll have this concealed look and I'll be able to store my vacuum away while also being able to charge it. All right, so without further ado, let's just get started. All right, so now that I've marked out where my studs are gonna be, I know that there's a stud lining up right here, and I know that the box is on this side. So what I'm gonna have to do is open this up, drill a hole through the stud, and I know that my outlet, my new outlet, can't go past here because there's a stud blocking here. So my outlet will go somewhere along here, which will be inside my cabinet still. So to make things a little bit more complicated, we're actually on an interior wall and on the other side of the wall is the recreation room. And the recreation room also has an outlet about over here. So I wanna make sure to get that measurement and make sure that I'm not cutting right into the back of that outlet. I wanna shift it over this side so that I'm not hitting anything else. And I really meant it when I said that we're renovating the mud room because this is where everything else has gone. You guys can see that the outlet is right there about 22 inches from that wall. So I wanna make sure that I'm not hitting that from the other side. All right, so actually good news, you guys. So I identified the stud was over here. I've also measured out where that other outlet is and it's actually on the other side of the stud. So I think what's happening is um, power is coming into this box. It's going through the stud into this box. And so I'm lucky here because what I'm gonna be able to do is go to the other side, open that box up and then cut a little hole and then just push that into a future hole that I'm gonna put right here. So we're pretty lucky. <laughs> So the next steps here are to cut a hole for our electrical box right here, and then we'll go over to the other room, open up that outlet, and then feed a wire through here, and then fish it through this hole. If that's a little bit complicated to understand, I'll show in the video. All right, so I've opened this box up, and so what I wanna do is draw an outline for my next box at the same height of this. I'm just going to arbitrarily place the box over here because that looks good to me. Again, this is gonna be inside of a cabinet, so it doesn't really matter where it is. I can see that this box is about 14 inches off the ground, so I'm gonna copy that over here. All right, so I've marked my line out. I'm just gonna put the box over here, and then I'm gonna put my level on it just to make sure that it's level, and just mark out the sides. All right, so now I'm gonna use my multi-tool to cut this square out. A uh, trick to keep it from falling into the void of the wall. Just screw that in and then pull it out like this. Huh, interesting. There is insulation on this wall actually. So I've pulled that out and it's interesting that this interior wall actually has insulation on it, but it might just be because this is the mudroom and the mudroom also has an exterior door. So this room could possibly get cold. So I guess that makes sense. It will make pulling that wire through to the other side maybe possibly more difficult because I don't know um, if there's insulation that will be keeping me from uh, moving that wire over to this side. All right, guys, we've already run into a problem. Let me show you. So this hole is about 15 inches off the wall. And so, if you guys know, I've got this side, and if I want my cabinets to fit within here, this measurement is 14 inches. So that means if all of my cabinets are gonna be the same depth, that one is actually gonna be outside the cabinet. So uh, either I have to make the cabinets bigger and have them kind of mismatched. So uh, on this side, the cabinets will be 14 inches and on this side, the cabinets will be like 17 inches or something, which I don't really like doing because that'll make it too big. So what I can actually do is just cut another hole and then have it within that. And I think that with the face frame and everything, it should be okay. So all in all, I'm gonna have to patch up this hole and cut another, another hole right here. I think it should be okay in the end. All right, so I've cut out that second hole. Maybe this hole will actually help me uh, fish wire through, we'll see. Maybe it actually is a fortunate thing. Um, I'll show you guys how to do a California patch at the end of this video. All right, so I'm on the other side of that wall now. I've got the outlet right here that we were talking about and I've got one of these uh, 
Electrical receptacle testers. I've already turned off the breaker, so there's no lights coming out, so I'm safe to work on this. Just gonna pull this out. All right, so good. All right, so here's our outlet. We can see here that there's only one wire coming in. You, you can tell that because there's only one set of blacks, whites, and uh, ground. So that means that we're actually at the end or the termination of this circuit. So that means that I don't have to worry about any other downstream outlets. This is the last one in this uh, circuit. So what I'm gonna do is drill a hole on the side of this so that I can feed another wire into here. And then that wire will go this way and I'll be able to feed it into that hole on the other side. And to do that, I'm gonna be using a half inch paddle bit. All right, I'm just gonna try my luck and see what happens if I just push this wire through. I should eventually reach a wall. All right, and I can feel the wire right here actually. So if I just grab through here. Actually kind of lucky that I <laughs> cut two holes, I guess. All right, so now I've got the wire through. All right, so now at this point, I just need to wire it up, power it. I'm gonna cut this. So we're on the other side of the wall and we can see that we fed the wire through right here. So let me explain the box that we're using. So in our case, since we're installing a box into a wall that already exists, we're gonna be using a old work box. What an old work box is, is it has these wings attached to these screws on the bottom and top. And these wings actually help it secure to the wall. It has a screw on the front. And if you use a screwdriver to loosen it, the wing will loosen from the screw. If you tighten that screw, it'll secure more to that wall. So with the old work box, you'd put it into the wall and just tighten that screw and it would secure to the wall. So if you're doing this on a new build or an area where there is no drywall, you would use a new box, a new work box, and it's just got these nails that you can hammer in on the side to the stud. Obviously, since the wall's there, we don't have clearance to hammer it, so that's why we're using the old work box. Boxes also come in two gang boxes if you wanted to put two separate receptacles side by side. Each of these boxes come with holes that you can punch out on the back of them to feed wires through. They've got a small tab that you can put a flathead screwdriver on and just hammer it through. All right, so I've got my box. I punched out a hole on this side, so I'm just gonna feed the wire through. And normally what I would do is push this box into the wall and then get a screwdriver and tighten both of these screws so that it's secure to the wall. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I was gonna be putting a cabinet here. And so with that cabinet, I want that, I want this box to actually flush with the cabinet. So it'd have to stick about three quarters of an inch out. So I'm actually not going to secure this, this to the wall just yet. In most situations, you would want to secure this to the wall almost immediately. All right, so I've got my utility knife and my wire cutters. So what I'm gonna do is just open this up. All right, so there's a black hot wire, there's a white neutral wire, and then there's a exposed ground wire. Using my wire strippers, I'm just going to set it at the appropriate gauge and give it a quarter twist and then just pull it off. All right, so now I've got my three exposed wires. Let me show you guys the different outlets that I have today. So in most older houses, we have this older style light and that comes with a matching face frame. But nowadays, I feel like uh, more newer builds are going this way, this direction with a square face. And with that, you would need to get a square face frame. Here I've got a screwless one or no visible screws. So I'm gonna be using that today. So a quick overview of the outlet. On one side, it's got these silver screws. That'll be going to the white wire. 
On the other side, you've got these uh, gold screws that'll be going to the black wire. On the bottom, you've got a green grounding screw and that'll be going to the exposed ground wire here. On the back of the outlet, you've got these holes that you can push the wires through, but generally electricians and contractors will tell you not to use those and to just wrap the wires around the screws instead. All right, so I'm gonna start off by just twisting these wires over and creating these loops. And that's because on the outlet, these silver screws and the screen screw are on this side. And as I twist, you're going to be twisting it in a counterclockwise motion. And you never want the wire to be the opposite way of the way you're screwing, because as it screws, it'll push the wire away. You want the wire to be going in the direction of the way you're screwing so that as it's screwing, it actually twists around it rather than being pushed away, if that makes any sense. So I'm just gonna loop it on. And what you can also do is just get your wire cutters again and then just tighten these. And then same thing for the other side. All right, so now the outlet is completely wired up. I'm just going to push this back into the box for a second. So you can see here, I'm adding a loop inside the box and that'll make it easier to push the outlet back in. And so if mine were secured to the wall, it would look like this right now. And what you can do next is just get your face frame. This screwless face frame comes in two pieces. You just kind of bend the top and the back will come off. Place it on here and just tighten these small screws. Uh, just fair warning, these screws on the face plate are very small, very short. So if you unscrew them, they'll fall out probably pretty easily and they'll be hard to find. All right, so the last step is just snapping in the face frame. It'll have a top arrow. And so that's my outlet right there. I'm gonna turn the breaker back on. And then I'm just gonna go back in with my receptacle checker. And you can see here that the receptacle checker says that if the right two yellows are on, then it's wired correctly. All right, so now you've got a working outlet. And if you didn't make a mistake like I did, this will probably be the end of the video for you. All right, so now you've got a working outlet. And if you haven't made any mistakes like I have, this will be the end of the video for you. But if you did, for some reason, make a hole in your wall, I will show you how to fix that also right now. So I've pulled the box out of the wall. I'm just gonna let it hang freely like that while I patch this hole up. I've got this big piece of drywall. It's left over from another project, but I don't need one this big. I'm gonna cut it down smaller. And then flip it over and you'll see where the crease is. And so now I'm just going to cut it down to the correct height. I'm gonna be using a method called the California patch. So this is the back side, this will be the front side. So you want this side to be the side that you don't cut. I put it up to the hole and what I do is just measure up to where the opening is, cut a little bit inside and just bring that down. And same thing for this side. Measure the inside a little bit and just bring that down. Just bring it in a little bit. And it doesn't have to be exact at all. I, this should be about the same size as this. What I'm gonna do now is just snap those pieces off like that. And because you've got the paper that you've left on this side, you can just peel it off like this. So I've got a little bit over here. Let me just see if it fits. It fits pretty well in there actually. So now I've got some drywall mud as well as a five inch putty knife. What I'm gonna do with the patch is apply a little bit of mud around each corner. So a little bit like this right here. And then I wanna like feather it out a little bit. So for the hole, I also want to add a little bit of mud so that the paper will stick.
All right, so the wall is mudded as well as my drywall patch, so I'm just gonna push it in. And using my putty knife, I just wanna make sure that it's flat in there. If it's not flat, we're gonna have some issues later on. All right, so it doesn't look that good right now, but with these things, you just kind of have to layer it on and on, and it'll look perfect in the end. You just have to be patient with it. So I'm gonna leave this to dry overnight, or at least for a few hours, and then I'll come in with a second coat. I'll do that again, sand it, and then do that again until it looks good. All right, so I've done about three coats now. I sanded in between them. I first started off with this putty knife to get it uh, just layered on, and then on the third layer, I used this 10-inch putty knife just to make it uh, feathered out a little bit more, make it look a little bit smoother. So now I'm just gonna sand this with my random orbital sander attached to my shop vac, and we should be good to paint after that. And to make sure that there aren't any particles left on the wall for painting later, I'll just wipe it down with a damp towel. All right, with a good amount of patience, I was able to patch that hole up. I primed and painted it now, and it's completely concealed. You wouldn't even know that was, there was a hole there before. Other than that, I've also screwed in the outlet. So that'll do it for me. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like, or if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. Until next time, this has been John Hang. Thanks.